From split decisions that caused outrage to straight-up robberies in championship fights, the UFC has seen its fair share of controversial calls over the years. So here are the worst judges' decisions in UFC history. And we're coming in hot with the first matchup on the list, being a complete train wreck. Because when Georges St. Pierre went head-to-head -head with Tommy Hendricks at UFC 167, it's safe to say that fans walked out of that arena extremely angry. Longtime UFC welterweight champion Georges St. Pierre already had a few controversies under his belt before this fight. And with retirement rumors spreading in the industry, all eyes were on the event. But things only got worse for Rush after the fight ended. With a split decision victory that most fans believed should have gone the other way, he kept his title. As for the fight itself, it started off as everyone predicted. Hendricks struggled at first, nearly falling victim to the guillotine choke by GSP, but with the help of his strong takedown defense and clinch elbows and punches, he held out. From there, it looked like GSP was in trouble as he got badly injured and eventually lost the second round as well. And the worst part of it all was that all of his strikes had no effect. He was able to pull himself together for the third and fifth rounds as he backed Hendricks into a corner. The real issue was the horrible fourth round in which he slipped to his back and Hendricks immediately took advantage. It was clear that Johnny had the upper hand for the majority of the fight, but with only one judge ruling in his favor, he was fighting a losing battle. Many claimed that he tried to coast the fifth round and so gave the fight away. This wasn't the first time we saw UFC judges pull something like this. After all, the Nick Lentz versus Tyson Griffin fight was the exact same scenario. Lentz defeated his previous top-ranked opponent, Griffin, via split decision at UFC 123 to improve his octagon record to 4-0-1. And while the win was one of the biggest achievements of his career, it also caused some major controversy among the people who believed Griffin should have won the contest. And they weren't completely wrong there. Throughout the fight, he had the upper hand. And while Lentz was able to secure a few takedowns, he also lost to Griffin more often, including a few early strong slams. Griffin also came out on top in the striking duel and even put Lentz in serious danger in the third round by taking him down twice. Anyone with even the most basic knowledge of the sport could see that Griffin won the fight 30-27. Any score other than that was just insane. Unfortunately, though, Lentz managed to escape with a victory, all while doing little to nothing to earn the win. Many fans believe that only one judge correctly scored the fight, giving Griffin a 30-27 victory. The other two judges gave Lentz a 29-28 victory. And while many casual UFC followers went on to forget about this robbery, the OGs know how frustrating this was. Though this isn't the only split decision fans overlook. I mean, Jake Shields' win at UFC 161 was also very controversial. Former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley may have had a reputation among fans as a boring fighter to watch, but in 2013, he was part of a slow fight that was in no way his fault. Woodley had entered the professional scene with a brutal knockout win over Jay Heron at UFC 156, so many thought he was the perfect person to defeat Shields. Although he was able to land some blows on the future champion, he took some major hits himself. Shields was knocked out by a heavy leg kick in the opening round and was severely stunned by a spinning back fist in the third. Even while Woodley didn't exactly hit many strikes when he did, they had a greater impact impact than Shields, so it was only fair that the judgment should have gone to Woodley by a score of 30-27. Instead, two of the judges tipped the scale in Shields' favor, voting 29-28 for him, with the lone judge voting 30-27 for Woodley. There was an immediate backlash, as many believe Shields' victory was undeserved, and I have to agree. Woodley was cheated out of his first victory over a genuine top-ranked welterweight contender. The fight has since largely been forgotten because of its slow pace, yet it's still criminally unfair. And if you're a Nick Diaz fan, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, because words can't describe just how unjust the results of his UFC 143 fight with Carlos Condit was. But at least Diaz fans have ensured that this fight will always be in discussion for the most controversial outcomes. Over five rounds, Diaz controlled the action, while Condit produced his offense 
offense while being on his back foot. Fighting statistics show that Condit outhit Diaz, although it's debatable whose strikes were more powerful. But critics say that Carlos was only focused on scoring points, and in the end, the strategy worked out for him. I wish I could say that UFC judges have gotten better at scoring over the years, but the recent Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman controversy proves otherwise. As the old saying goes, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. And Edwards was giving it his best. During the March 18, 2023 UFC fight at the O2 in London, the fight was filled with multiple fouls, many of which weren't even called. But that didn't stop Edwards from retaining his championship and defeating Usman by a majority vote. You'd think that with how good the official seats are during the match, they'd have a clear view of Edwards' stunts. But it was exactly the opposite. Edward was grabbing gloves throughout the fight, and while you could choose to ignore them, you can't deny the advantage that gave him. They actually allowed him to avoid Usman's attempts for a takedown, and the extensive kicking Edwards was using wasn't fair either. In the fourth round, there was a direct soccer punt up the middle and a knee to the groin. Yet the wildest moment of the fight came when he tried to go for some old school eye pokes. Regardless of whose side you were on before the fight, it's clear that this was a straight up robbery. But even then, it's not the worst ruling we've ever seen from UFC officials. Because Evan Dunham's controversial loss at UFC 119 takes the cake. Dunham entered the fight with a record of 11 straight victories, four of which were in the UFC, and it looked like he was ready to add a 12th when he trapped Sean Shirk in a tight guillotine choke early on in the fight. Even the announcer Mike Goldberg believed Shirk had won, as he started to exclaim his famous, it's all over line. But as Shirk's face started turning purple, he managed to escape and split Dunham open with his elbow. Still, Dunham went on to win the second and third rounds after coming dangerously close to choking Shirk twice more. Rear victories for the muscle shark. He's avoided being submitted on multiple occasions. As well as nearly knocking him out with a high kick in the third round. At worst, Dunham should have won with a score of 29-28. But two of the judges gave Shirk the win with a score of 29-28, shocking the MMA world. Once the UFC realized how badly they messed up, they tried to put a bandage on the whole thing. He's doing damage, and that damage is going to slow Sean Shirk down for the third. They have done him in the main event spot against Melvin Guillard in his next fight, but the damage was already done, and there was nothing Dana White could do to fix it. Well, there you have it. These were the worst judges' decisions in UFC history.